Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom, and if you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we will be anti hauling, but before we get into today's video, or the meat of today's video, I have a little moment of gratitude I would like to talk about before going into talking about new makeup releases. So if you're only interested in hearing about the new makeup releases, I'm gonna leave a timestamp upon the screen for you to click wherever your heart desires. I'm only, it's I, just a little timestamp. We're not doing chapters along the bottom. That's not what we're doing. So you can just skip this if you decide that you just don't wanna hear me be a little bit thankful. So, hi. Hello, hi. Hi, are you new here? Hi, did, did Hannah send you? Hello, hi. H welcome, hi. H hello, welcome. Okay. <laughs> so hi, if you're new here from Hannah, Hannah Louise Poston, if, if she has sent you the big HLP, which I love that people in my comments have referred to her as such, and that is how I will refer to her as such. So Hannah, Louise Poston, if you're if you're not following her, if you're not subscribed to Hannah, my dog is also here, so if you can hear some huffing and puffing, I think she's in a bit of a mood. I <laughs> don't really know what's going on. So Hannah shared a couple of my videos and recommended me, and I, well, first of all, uh, I got quite a few new subscribers, so if you're new here, hi, welcome to this channel. Welcome to my space. I'm happy and thankful that you you know, took Hannah's suggestion, checked me out, hit the subscribe button, left me some beautiful comments on some of my most recent videos. I'm very thankful for that. I hope I can provide some content to you that you enjoy and want to stick around to see. But uh, first and foremost, Hannah, thank you so much for shouting me out. That's like truly wild and cool. And I am so thankful, like literally so thankful. It couldn't have been a better creator to shout me out. I've actually been watching a lot of Hannah's content recently. I I don't know, how, it, it's, I would say it's the relatively recent past that I have found Hannah and subscribed to her. I adore her content and also her, watching her has kind of helped me morph my content into something that I want it to be. So there are definitely, if you're, if you're a Hannah stan and that's what brought you here, you're gonna see some parallels like, some anti-consumerism chat as we are gonna do here in today's anti haul You just loving my collection as it is. I'm also currently on a no buy. The no buy was also inspired by Hannah. So at least since July, since a little bit before July, I've been subscribed to Hannah and enjoying her content. So this is like a really beautiful, amazing full circle moment. I will try not to take this for granted. I just have so much gratitude about the situation. So yes, if you're a new subscriber, thank you so much for uh, checking me out again. And let's just get into this video. And Hannah, again, thank you so much. Oh my God. Again, if you're new to my channel and just skip that whole gratitude section, this is an anti haul and I am on a six month no buy. So essentially everything is off the table. I'm not buying any of this, even if I like it. So unlike the traditional methodology that Kimberly Clark did when she created this type of video for us to all try out and morph into what we want in our anti hauls to look like. While it still is anti-consumerism in the fact that I'm not going to buy it, I'm also gonna not be so, I might not be as harsh as one might expect in an anti haul. Like I'm gonna say there are some things in here that I want to buy, but I'm not gonna buy. Some of them might make it to my list to check out again, reconsider whenever, I am out of my no buy, maybe I'll want to buy it then. If if the fever is still there, if I'm feeling it deep in my soul, I might buy it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna check out a couple of Instagram accounts. I use the trend mood and I also use makeup release radar because sometimes there's like inconsistencies. One will have one thing and one will have the other and makeup release radar covers a lot more indie brands, but it's a little bit more overwhelming. Anyway, let's jump into this video. So I'm gonna click on Trend Mood 1. We're gonna do some scrolling, some conversational actions. So first things first, I saw this last night. Also, I do these about every two weeks because the 
production of makeup seems to move so quickly these days. So I do them every two weeks, you know, to stay fresh, to stay up and make sure that I know what's going on in the makeup industry, I guess. I don't know why I feel like I need to have a pulse on that. Patrick Ta is releasing a, the major headline blush palette, which includes three shades with the powder formula and the cream fuel formula. And I believe that these are existing shades. I'm wondering how much it is. This seems like a, uh, a, a like a, not like a leak, but like a, a sneak peek, but you can see all of the shades because it's it definitely is just like somebody took this photo. It's definitely not like a photographer's photo, at least as of right now, as I'm looking at Trend Mood on this day, whatever day today is, <laughs> October something. Uh, early October, October 10th. It is the 10th. My phone says so, so I must be, must be correct. Okay. So let's talk about this. So this really like, this made my brain go, ooh, 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 made my brain say, ah! It made me, it made me like, just made me like so excited. I love blush. I love blush entirely too much to the point where I have an uncontrollable blush collection. I don't, it's not the most out of control. But it, you know, it's it's not minimal. Like we're not talking a minimal blush collection. So when I see this, my I just I'm like ah. And I've never tried the Patrick Ta formula, and I would like to. And I've heard good things about it, even at my time at Sephora. If this is if this is like a more discounted way to try more shades, I think that's great. But me being realistic with myself is I would rather just buy the shade of the Patrick Ta duo that I want the most and try the formula that way as opposed to buying a blush palette. Another thing is I just kind of in general personally don't care for the face palette. The, I just don't care for face palettes anymore. It, it's hard because it's very cool because you get a deal. It's like normally a better price to have all of these things in one place as opposed to having them separately. But what I will say personally is the way I have my makeup drawers organized right now, which is definitely not like the most optimum organizational system, is that my blushes, highlight, and those compacts are all in one drawer and then my face palettes are in another drawer. And so I often, when I'm needing some complexion for my face, I'm gonna go into that blush bronzer compact drawer and I'm not gonna, I always forget that I have these like blush palettes, bronzer palettes, you know, sculpting palettes, all of those things in this other drawer. So I forget to use them. So I'd buy this palette. It would go into my face palette drawer and it would not get the use that it deserves. So I do think me going forward is the wisest choice is to get just whichever one that I find the most beautiful, bring that into my collection. If I were going to get a Patrick Ta blush, but I'm not, I'm not really on the market for blush. I have, like I said, I have a lot of blush and you know, blush is famously a product that takes some work and investment to get through. And I like the formulas of what I have. If I didn't, they wouldn't be my collection. So I don't need to introduce something new into my collection that just isn't gonna get any attention because it won't. <laughs> I just know that factually, I don't. But if you are someone who loves blush, doesn't have an overwhelming blush collection, I could see this potentially being like a very beautiful product to have because Patrick Ta, the whole branding, all of it's very beautiful and stunning. I see the beauty in this, but again, it's just like, it's, it's not gonna be my journey with the Patrick Ta blushes. Patrick Ta in general, probably. Next, I would like to talk about the Natasha Denona Mini Metropolis palette. So this sneak peeked a bit ago. You could like see it in the background of a trend mood photo. And so there was like a lot of like hubbub of like, what is that, what is that? So it's the Mini Metropolis. I think this is actually kind of smart. We have always been playing the game with the mini and the, the mini palettes being eventually a larger palette, vice versa, one thing turns into another. So we are taking the Metropolis palette. It is, it, it was $129, but instead of having 15 shades with the large pans, it has the midi size pans and just a ton of them. So I think whenever the Metropolis palette launched, I feel like the, a lot of the chatter around it was that they didn't like, people didn't like the color story, didn't understand the color story. Too many shadows, too many options, wasn't succinct enough. And so I think this would be a great way for someone to like maybe try out some of the colors in that story. But ultimately the Metropolis palette is like a green, heavy, grungy, some grungy yellows. And then there are some interesting pops in it where you have like blues and reds, which is, it's definitely interesting. You also have some oranges in there, which I also own the Metropolis palette. So first and foremost, 
I'm not going to buy this. No. But I do think, intelligence-wise, thinking about branding and the way Natasha Denona is currently marketing herself, this is a very smart way to get maybe people to try a, like the mini Metropolis, feel out those colors, and maybe then decide to graduate to the larger palette. Or this is just like a beautiful little capsule. This is definitely excluding my owning of the Metropolis palette. I tend to... <laughs> Greeny gold, green and gold, gold and green, green, gold, brown is a color story that is densely populated in my collection because I just love green eyeshadow so much, and which is so funny. I say it all the time. I could not tell you the last time I did a video where I had green eyeshadow on my face. And I, I swear to God, I say it every single video. I'm like, green eyeshadow is my favorite. But I feel like I wear a lot of green eyeshadow outside of the, the space in YouTube. Like if I'm just going to get ready to go out with my friends, it's like a green smoky eye is like what I'm going to be putting on my face. So that's cool. I think it's interesting that it comes with a brush. Like that's a thing we're doing. Like it's a, it's a set, I guess. I don't know how they're going to package it in boxing. Like is, um, oh, it says at Sephora. I was like, can you buy it at Sephora or is it going to be an, an ND website exclusive? So it also has one new shade. I'm not sure which one of the new shades it is. Anyway, I like the Metropolis palette. If you've been interested in it and didn't want to spend the $129 and wanted to get a feel for the color story, see if you were going to use it, I could see this being a smart purchase for you. But only if it's only that, only in that way, if you're not into these colors and you're just buying it to like collect and touch dinner, like that's not the mindset that I think we need to be in. So no, not, I, I won't buy this. I'm not tempted to buy this even afterward because I, I have, clearly I have more of these shadows in my collection already. There's a new beauty brand called Christina Sicalius Beauty. And it looks like we have an eyeshadow and some highlighters. I don't know who this person is. There's a couple different photos of this palette and the first photo, the overhead photo with all of the products, it, I, there's no, nothing about this enchants me. I don't, I, nothing. But then I scroll to a different promotional photo where you catch it at a different angle. The shimmers have a little bit more life to them than it initially seems. So they have, it looks like there might be some dimension as far as like duochrome, maybe yeah, like duochrome. It doesn't look like any of these would be a multi-chrome, but it's it's intriguing. So first and foremost, for me, when I'm looking at my collection, obviously uh, I'm talking about everything in that standard. Like I'm talking about it in relation to mine. So I get, this is beautiful. I think this is a beautiful palette, assuming that the second photo is reflecting light off of the shadows better than the first promotional photo that I see. I could see people who really love neutrals, really enjoying this and really getting a lot of use of this, assuming that they have, they don't have a million other neutral palettes. I could dupe this easily in my collection, so I wouldn't need that because I've already spent the money on my singles and all of my other shadows that I could put together to create this. So I would not need to spend the money to purchase this. There, I don't, there's no pricing on this post, so I don't know how much this would cost you, what this is going to run. But I think, people who maybe aren't into makeup sorry my neighbor is sawing things which is confusing as he has company over right now so i don't know if they are like getting together to saw things but i swear i just saw a baby walk past my window so i have uh, i have no idea what they're doing so if you can hear the chainsaws in the background i apologize being critical of this this is nothing that would be special to my collection this would be something that I would overlook in my collection time and time again if it was in one of my drawers so i definitely don't need it but it is beautiful it is beautiful. It's like the Patrick Ta palette, the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette, which I can't remember the name of. And this like sing to me the same spiritually, like, oh, what a beautiful neutral palette. And if this was my only palette, I would love it to death. And I swear to God, I would hit pan in every single one of these shadows. But that is not the case for my makeup collection. I don't need to invite this temptation into my life. So Viseart released two new eyeshadow palettes. There is the Bijouzette Etendue and cashmere étendu. So the Bijou Z, the Bijou Jouette palette, which is the one that has all the colors in it, it's very pretty, I'm not gonna lie. And the swatches of it make it look like it is actually colorful because sometimes the fizzy art, what you think you're getting and what you actually get are two different things and never like in a bad way, but like with the shimmers, 
you never know if it's gonna be like a full opacity or something that you would can you're supposed to layer or whatever like upon looking at it i have a lot of Vizier art in my collection i love Vizier art mats Vizier art mats are where it's at i also like their shimmers but like the mat the mats are just just gets i love those mats i love so i'm i i think these are very beautiful i don't again i don't need any makeup and i'm on a no buy so again I think both palettes are very beautiful. I love this like very, very cool toned mauve purple palette. I love kind of everything about it. So if I were to have made like, when Natasha Denona announced the Glam palette, which I thought was gonna be one thing, this is what I would have like kind of expected, but the Glam palette did not sing to me the way I expected it to. It wasn't as cool toned as I wanted. This kind of really speaks to that cool toned fantasy that I want. These are things that I could see maybe working through some of my collection and maybe getting rid of some things. I could see a space for either one of these in my collection in the future, but as of right now, it's like not the move. Also, if this is their holiday palettes, how classy. Viseart's so classy. Viseart because, you know, I think they are like a makeup, a makeup artist brand first and then a consumer brand second. What they do is always just so much different than everyone else because this is just very subtle, but it feels very fall, it feels very on brand, especially that cool tone palette, but the colors even, they feel like in the Bijouet palette, they feel autumn-y, but they feel bright, like bright autumn, bright autumn. Cause I can see like leaves falling and I love the oranges in there. It's very pretty, it's very pretty. I, I don't know. I'm not even going to, I don't think I'm going to even put these on my list to buy, uh, to reconsider buying at the end of my no buy. Cause I don't think that I'm that tempted by them, but I do think they're incredibly beautiful. There is a new matriarch collection by Prados Beauty coming out in collaboration with Stephen Judd, Stephen Paul Judd, Indigenous People's Day 2021. So there's a 30 shade palette. A, there's a highlight palette palette a blush palette a bronzer palette there's lip there's more but i want to let's hone in on the palette and the face palettes because i have uh, opinions about them so i am not one for big palettes for the most part because i kind of get overwhelmed by them and when i look at this palette initially i see colors that i would use together but they're far apart and i think because of the dissonance of when i'm looking at this palette like I would, wouldn't be inclined to put them together because they're not close together in the palette. And I know that sounds kind of ridiculous and kind of crazy, but like that's just not not it for me. Because I've said this before, but when you, when you're when there's so many shades, is it a color story or, or is it just eyeshadow palette? Do you know what I'm saying? Because does this feel curated? Does this feel like you want me to be inspired in such a way, like what is your, what is the inspiration for me? What is my, like, what am I supposed to be inspired about? But, Cause it seems like I could go anywhere, which if you don't have a large makeup collection, this could be great because you have a lot of colors, a lot of options. But with someone who is very, very picky, trying to curate my collection and already has a large collection, I look at this and I feel like, ah, Too much. No, thank you. Also, I don't know. <laughs> it's like we're playing bingo because the rows are numbered and then the top says, this top says Prados. So it's like, oh yes, I'm using shade P1. I don't know, there's no shade names on the, the packaging of the palette. There might be on the back or maybe there's a plastic insert that might have the shade names on it. But looking at it this way, it's like, I'm using S5, which is, which will be very entertaining should someone decide to review this and do some looks with it on YouTube, because it's going to be like, okay, I'm going to put P1. Now, I realize other brands have done this before, but it does feel very like bingo-y to me. I don't know. Not that, that I don't think like that's gauche or anything. I just, like, it kind of amused me. Let's talk about these face palettes though, because I think this is where I like, I'm lost. I'm lost. So why didn't we do like a light, medium, and deep? face palette as opposed to doing like a highlighter palette which has like one shade for each you know level of skin tone I don't know like I don't know this like like the especially the bronzer palette like 
I don't need, I want one shade of bronzer that's gonna work for me. Now I understand that maybe some people like to layer their bronzers, maybe like do a darker one where they really want to feel the contours of their face being contoured in and then having like a lighter one going around the rest of their face, you know, essentially brontouring as I guess we call it here on the internet. So I, I just wish they were three separate palettes that had highlighter, blush, bronzer, or like highlighter, two blushes and a bronzer, not this. Because I don't want a bronzer palette that has a bronzer that isn't gonna work for me and I'm never gonna use. And like, uh, you, the mentality of like, I'll use it as an eyeshadow is like, we need to get out of that. We need to like stop using that as an excuse. We need to stop saying that. We just like need to get through that because it's like, you know, you're never gonna do it. So the only one of the face palettes that I think would be usable maybe for all skin tones is the blush palette, which is like, fine because you can definitely play with the density of brush the how much pressure you're applying to the face when you're applying like you can make I think you can make at least for lighter people trying to use a blush that has more pigment in it you can definitely like fuss around with it unfortunately I don't think that works vice versa like someone with a deeper complexion can't just like layer on something that is too light for their skin tone anyway I don't know I just I don't know why I, I hate this but I do <laughs> That the face palettes, like, I just, like, this could have been configured better. Natasha Denona is releasing, like, the Tiny Lamp. What is this actually called? I, it doesn't really have an, it's, I don't see a name, but it's a three pan eyeshadow palette. Now, I guess I'm not mad at the idea of, like, an eyeshadow trio. Like, I guess, because, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> a person who doesn't want to, put glitter liner on their eyelids is like not, this is like suitable for the average consumer. And if you are like super basique with your makeup, super basique, you might get a, a lot of use out. Like I could see, like if this was your only eyeshadow palette and you were just like, this is what I like, this is the look. Hell yeah, this is great, but it's $19. So when you think about the other mini palettes that have five eyeshadows, they have tw it's $25. So the markup here is higher. $15? Why not 15? Why not 15? If it's 25 for five, why not 15 for three? Does that make sense? So this is clearly something that is meant to be for the person on the go, the person who wears makeup on the go, like throws it in their bag. That's the one look they're gonna do. Like, or you take it traveling with you and like, you're like, I'm wearing this eye look this, this week or this two weeks on vacation. This is the eye look I got, which is totally fine. But I think as a, as a makeup lover, as someone who's like invested in makeup and like once uh, this is just like, I don't know, I don't know. And apparently there's a mini Biba that appears in a, in a Sephora favorites advent calendar, which I would not recommend you do that. No, don't go that route. I feel like this is gonna sell well. And I guess if you have never tried Natasha Denona and you wanna try three shades, sure. I would still say spend the extra $6 and at least get a mini so you can kind of get a little bit more variety in the formulas because Natasha Denona notoriously has like too many formulas <laughs> where it's like this type of matte and that type of matte and then another type of matte and then this type of shimmer and then that type of shimmer and then this metallic and that metallic. Like there's a lot of formulas to work your way through if you've never experienced Natasha Denona. So I would say the five pan is probably better and it's only $6 more. It's not like, it's not $10 more because this isn't $15. But if it were $15, slam dunk. But it's not. So I'm not feeling that. Kind of cosmetics got the intellectual property rights to Freddy Krueger and they ran on the street. Weird collab. Weird. I, I don't know a lot about Miss Jenner, so maybe she's really into horror. However, how is this the first time we've had a night? Like how is, how, how is this the first one? Like how has this property not been touched? There are other brands that I could have seen running, taking this and running with it as well. Like Melt Makeup doing a Nightmare on Elm Street, Urban Decay 10 years ago <laughs> doing a Nightmare on Elm Street. And maybe there has been, and I just don't, I'm not aware of it. But I don't wear a lot of red eyeshadow, but I always like am very attempted by it. And I, I hold myself back because it's like, when was the last time you put red eyeshadow on? But uh, arguably when was the last time I put green eyeshadow, my favorite color of eyeshadow on, 
one can never tell. Certainly not on YouTube, never on YouTube. Anyway, so I, I think this palette's actually very, I like, I kind of like it. I, I, uh, I like it. <laughs> I don't know that it screams a nightmare on Elm Street. I would have liked a little, a lot more depth, a lot darker. I think that could have been something that we maybe we went with darker, just more saturation is what I think would have made this better. But I'm not mad. Good for her for snagging the rights to this because I think that's smart. Like, I don't know. I do you want to talk about this? Okay, so I actually used my Hint Dash Beautopsy palette today for the mattes in the look that I'm wearing. If there's anyone other than Pat McGrath who like sells the fantasy of me being a talented makeup artist, <laughs> it's Hindash. Hindash does such beautiful work as a makeup artist, like stunning work. And what's I love about it is that the, 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 the skin, the complexion is so simple and then we have to the eye appears to be a simple thing and then there's just so much to it. I am not one to fuss around with graphic liner. I have a wing on today, but I don't, couldn't tell you the last time I put a wing on. Probably, well, I, oh, I, I had, I went to a potluck dinner and I had a, a wing on that time. Cause I, I've been really enjoying this kind of eye shape that I've been throwing together recently. Like it's kind of my, my go-to, my, my signature. I actually don't really want a signature look. Anyway, moving on. He's released the Haroline Liquid Eyeliner in Ultra Black. I don't know why I think this would make me want to use liquid liner and try graphic liner. Graphic liner is incredibly infuriating to me. <laughs> I've tried it and have worked on it before and I can do some like very slight graphic liner, but I want to do what Hindash can do without putting the practice into it. So there's this fantasy in the hairline eyeliner that I was like, oh yes, if I buy this, I'm going to be so good at eyeliner that I'm going to be able to do the same exact things as Hindash. Except my wings aren't really even good today. <laughs> and I reach for liquid, liquid liner like so irregularly. I mostly pick up liquid liner to like fix mistakes. And I know that sounds weird, but that is typically why I, I, it's like, if I need to like cover something, it's like, I just get liquid liner. Like if something's not looking good on my eyelids, I'm like, we're just gonna do a wing. We're gonna throw that on top, just like fix it. And I already have a formula of uh, liquid eyeliner that I like. I like the Surratt and I like that it's refillable, but I could definitely see myself, maybe when this pack, this, fi this fill of my Surratt beauty kicks the bucket, buying the hairline. The only thing about Hindash is that you had to buy it from his website. I think he just started stocking elsewhere, but I'm pretty sure the shipping on my Beautopsy palette was either 10 or $15. And I like didn't pay for express shipping or anything like that. That's just like how much it cost. And I don't want to spend, I don't know how much the eyeliner is. I'm sure it says here. So it's $23. And if I buy it from his website, I'm going to spend 10 to $20 on shipping. That's not going to be worth it to me. I do think, however, that in the future, I will at some point. This, I feel like this eyeliner and I are destined to cross paths, but to talk me off that ledge, if I was in a purchasing time, in purchasing power mode, this is how I would talk myself out of it. I have an eyeliner I like. It's not dead. I don't need another eyeliner. Do I need to search for a new eyeliner? Like I'm happy with my eyeliner my liquid liner, so, and I don't use it a lot. So why would I spend $23 plus exorbitant shipping to get it? And I'm not opposed to paying for shipping, by the way. It's just, I already have the Beautopsy palette and there isn't anything else to buy. So I would just end up buying an eyeliner with $10 shipping. I do think like a cap out at like $5 shipping is like where I'm like the most I'm willing to pay. But also these come direct from, I believe from Dubai is where the product came from when I ordered my Beautopsy palette. So understood, understand why shipping is expensive because I'm technically international to that. The fantasy, fully there. Do I need it? No. Do you need it? No. I'm sure you have an eyeliner that works really well for you. Sorry, this one's going to be a long one, which I like wasn't intending on it. I didn't realize in two weeks time that all of these holiday releases were coming. It's Jaclyn Hill and Morphe. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, I, uh, 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 uh. Was there, was there a deal signed that they had to round this out? And this says it's the final, they said, I've read, I've heard 
tell, I've heard tell that this is the final Morphe Jaclyn Hill collaboration. Which, I, okay, so has Jaclyn Hill released her own eyeshadows yet? I don't think she has. I bet it has something to do with whatever deal with Morphe Jaclyn has. I don't even know when this launched. I don't know if it already launched, but like, I just foresee disaster. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I've never bought anything associated with Jaclyn Hill. I don't plan to really ever. I just don't understand how this is where we landed. I love a neutral palette. I don't like Morphe, but I don't really care for Jaclyn Hill either. And that's like, not in any other, I just like don't care for her. There are people who just in this world are not for us. And I just think Jaclyn Hill is one of those people who is not for me. Don't have ill will towards her or anything like that. It's just, I just don't understand how, this is just where we landed. It is also way to go. If this is the final collaboration between the two, what a stinker to go out on. Like I would, I would want Jaclyn Hill's first palette from Morphe to be like the last palette from her and Morphe because it was like exciting and there was like a lot to it. And while I can appreciate something simple and something beautiful and something neutral, I really don't like the quality of Morphe eyeshadows. This does nothing for me. No, thank you. That's it for Trend Mood. I'm gonna go to Makeup Release Radar because I think I saw something earlier today. Like it was posted today that I was like, I would like to talk about that. So I just clicked on Makeup Release Radar. This is a brand I'm not familiar, but there is the Martine Cosmetics 669 palette and it has 18 shades in it. It's 63.58. Now, this, this is giving me like that Halloween fantasy that I would want if I was on the market for a Halloween palette or something that felt spooky. Now, I actually, I don't really gravitate towards like very dark smoky eyes. Like that's not really what I gravitate to it, but it's a fantasy of mine. It's not something I often do on my eyes. I do it every now and then, but, every, but even I, I think that I want to do it more than I actually do or even want to do. So I see this and I'm like, oh, and like I, my brain immediately said, I want this. <laughs> Let's like take a self-reflection. I don't wear a lot of smoky eyes, but I think this is so, this is beautiful. Like this is kind of like kicking all the boxes of something that I would potentially buy. And like am inspired by, but it's, I think it's also something that once I had in my collection, assuming that the formula was good and I really liked it, it would still get overlooked in my collection because this is just not the kind of eye that I do on a regular basis. Probably wouldn't use it, but it does look beautiful. The swatches look beautiful. Like I'm inclined to know more about this, which that that's always a good thing. So I'm, I'm inclined, I'm inclined to know more. I just saw this earlier on Makeup Release Radar. It's from Tammy Tanuka and also another person inspired, it says Inspired Sigil. It is just a palette of seven beautiful iridescent topper looking shades. It's very beautiful. And I think if you are someone, this, what this screams to me, what this says to me, is if you're someone who hasn't imbibed on some like indie toppers, indie duochromes, indie something, but you wanted like a large selection for less, well, less money. It's $52, it's on Etsy, interesting. I think this is really beautiful. I don't, I can't speak to the formula, but like, this is like elevated, elegant. It just looks so stunning. I don't know. And all of these shades are so pretty. I'd be inclined to try it. I love whenever I look at something because I've really come to love like indie duochromes, multi-chromes and things like that, but they are quite expensive. And even though this is $52, if you were to buy like five duochromes or five iridescent toppers from Kiona, you'd be spending like a hundred dollars. So this is more reasonable than that. So if you don't, if you don't have anything in this in your collection like this, and you were intrigued by it, I do think that this is very beautiful, very very pretty. But again, not for me. But I just wanted to like shout it out. Okay, sorry for this being such a long video. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching this far. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video and want to see more from me, make sure to like this video and then also subscribe. We love to do that here. I'm a nuanced baguette. And if you like nuanced baguettes, this is the place to get them. If you like my voice and would like to hear more of it, I appear on three podcasts throughout the week. You can check this out in my link tree down below. And if you are interested in following me on Instagram, that is also where you can follow me on Instagram. So. 
go ahead and do those things. Again, thank you so much, Hannah, for shouting me out. And I really appreciate it. And I'm great more grateful than I think you'll ever know. And if you are a new subscriber and you made it to the end, thank you so much for subscribing. Like, honestly, truly, I'm feeling so blessed. Well, I will see you in the next one. Friends.